It is uh, 10.04, and the first main business meeting of the World Science Fiction Society at the 75th World Science Fiction Convention will be in order. Secretary Linda Denneroff. Uh, to her right is the Deputy Presiding Officer Donald Eastlake, who's also running the slides and will preside in my place in the couple of places where I am not able to preside. And the videographer over here doing the official recordings for the World Science Fiction Society is Lisa Hayes. This meeting is being recorded by the business meeting staff. It is also being, I think, live streamed on the YouTube Worldcon 75 channel. I don't know the address of it because it starts, they don't know the address until they start doing it. Um, these recordings are on, uh, our recordings from the official recording will go on to the Worldcon events channel as soon as possible, but because of the live streaming going on here, I may not do that until I get back home. We will have short technical timeouts every 20 to 30 minutes to change the recording medium. If you do not want your image and voice recorded, you need to sit behind the camera areas, and uh, in such case you can vote, but you cannot participate in debate, because if you do participate in debate, your voice and image will be recorded. Uh, yes, next slide then, 28. Remember to sign up on the attendance sheets. Uh, the attendee ribbons are actually back in the pickup area. If you have a device that makes noise, silence it. In general, if you are physically able to do so, when you are recognized to speak, even if you are simply raising a question, you need to come to the lectern and speak into the microphone there. Not necessarily this close. Actually, those microphones do pick up better than you think. Um, but face the audience and address your comments to the chair, even if though you're not actually looking at the chair. If you are unable to stand or come to a microphone, make this clear time. We don't want you to go through undue hardship. We do have a wireless microphone that we will bring to people in those cases. But in general, we would prefer people come to the and to speak to. Uh, a reminder that debate need not be factual, and it, but it must be civil. And that by not being factual, none of you in this room has the right to call out corrections to somebody to correct their facts. If you start doing so, I will hush you. If you want to correct somebody else's facts, you need to be rec recognized by the chair to give your own debate and use up your own debate time to do it. There's a slide about how uh, a motion is appealed. Um, that's the next slide, 29, I believe. Yes. Uh, not going to go into full details on it, but some of you were yesterday know, know uh, if, the, if, if the chair's ruling is appealed, there's a somewhat separate process for determining how it works, and there will probably be a couple of appeals that we usually are. Okay. Today, the things we need uh, to do, we, I might add, for yesterday, we just barely got through everything we needed to do, and I want to thank the members for passing new rules that make it possible for us to get into that. Uh, today, we will uh, have the things that were not, the business that wasn't completed yesterday at first, and the elections for the Wisconsin Smart Protection Committee, which we'll get to fairly shortly. 
we will, after we take, after we deal with committee reports, which uh, are part of that initial business, the three statutory committees uh, and the mark committee elections, we will start taking up constitutional amendments passed on from the last year, the ratification votes, and then we will take up new constitutional amendments. Before I get to that, however, the actual first item there, I, the, chair, the chair thinks that it would work better for us, I'm going to get down to the right slide myself so I see which one it is. Pretty good. Um, just a moment. The Young Adult Award, I am C.11, and its associated amendment, and a related new amendment regarding the naming of it that is contingent on it passing. The chair believes that it would be better for us if we got that dealt with today and suggests that we schedule that to start at the first communion opportunity past uh, 11 o'clock. Is there an objection to doing so? All right, that is then set, Don, keep me on track for that, please, as a general order for the first time, not before 11 o'clock. In that case, we can move on to committee reports. Okay. Yes? Can we just check that there's somebody else from the YA group who can stay that long? Uh, well, if, if, if the, question, well, the question was asked whether there was anybody here from the YA group that would stay this long. Uh, the chair points out that I've actually advanced it in the agenda. There's a very good chance it wouldn't even come up today otherwise. I do apologize. Yes. This is only my uh, That's fine. Okay, I understand. All right, uh, so next is committee reports. So let's deal with some committee reports. Yes, and the first committee to report is the only one defined in the Constitution, the Worcester Smart Protection Committee. The chair yields to the deputy because what he's the, because this person is the chair of the Mark Committee. Short, short. Mr. Chairman, the Worcester Smart Protection Committee is your only committee that is permanent in the organization. It takes care of our service marks. That is the things that, like Hugo Award and WorldCom. It came in so late last year in the meeting, so we didn't get a chance to put it into our written report. But it's very, very relevant to where we're meeting this year. Your committee is very pleased to report that the service mark well, onto a trademark for the word Hugo Award was registered in the European Union as of last year. In addition, the name WorldCon and the Hugo Award logo were also registered in the EU. Uh, so that is our okay. Those That is the second country slash region that, that has been registered in. Um, of course, it was in the U.S., but we now have coverage in the, in the U.S. and the European Union. I certainly am not going to go through our entire written report. Hopefully some of you did read it. It was otherwise a relatively quiet year for us. We responded to queries. We dealt with minor mark infringements. We answered many queries. In this coming year, the committee generally expects to start undertaking a review of what our expenditures over the next decade will be. They go up, uh, especially now that we have more service marks. They do have to be renewed periodically. And I expect that the committee will have a more comprehensive report on plans for future strategy at our report to San Jose next year. Are there any questions, Mr. Chairman, of the MPC? As part of the New Zealand in 2020 World Con bid, um, we have registered the domain names um, worldcon78.org and worldcon2020.org. Now I have uh, informed the uh, Mark Protection Committee of this and, and uh, they have uh, agreed that this is okay. We, we, uh, um, we have declared to them that whoever wins for 2020, we will of course pass on um, the, uh, the rights to allocate those domain names. 
um, I would ask the, uh, um, the meeting to consider asking the Mark Protection Committee to look into doing this on a regular basis. We now have a shift in tendency for the names for World Comms. Um, I suspect that will be uh, 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 continued at the satisfaction business meeting tomorrow. I may be wrong, but I suspect the World Comm um, 77 to be announced as a name. Um, and given we now have a repeating pattern for the names, we run much more risk of somebody noticing this um, and uh, proactively registering them. Um, so I'd ask the LBC if they were to look into uh, registering some years ahead, not infinitely, but some years ahead. Mr. Chairman, I reclaim the balance of my time. Uh, the, uh, the Mark Protection Committee know, uh, is aware of this issue and it is on our list of things to try and get done as we, uh, in, in the coming year or two. And that's it. I'm over. Oh, that a question? Uh, Vince Crofty again. Um, just a, maybe just missed, I don't know if this is intended to be a complete list of domain names, but some years ago we actually purchased worldcom.com and it now is actually pointing to worldcom.org, so just to make sure that we don't forget that because it was actually quite an expensive one to get. <laughs> it, it is, we have not been, it has not been a completely comprehensive list. Just for the record so you all understand, the Mark Protection Committee, on behalf of the World Science Fiction Society, World Con, etc., maintains as many of our domain names and uh, as well as part of our intellectual property. Through the Hugo Awards Marketing Committee, we also manage the websites thehugoawards.org, worldcon.org, wsfswispus.org, and nastic.org. Um, if you're looking for who to blame for most of the words that you see on the front pages of those sites, it's mostly me. But if you see something that needs corrected, write to contact information on those websites, we'll get it fixed or corrected as soon as possible. We are slightly behind with updates at the moment. Are there any further questions? I yield. Thank you. At this time, we will do the elections for the Market Protection Committee. The, be the I forgot who they were. There are three seats uh, up for election. The nominees are John Coxon, Linda Dinneroff, Dave McCarty, and Mike Wilma. Despite the fact that you see check boxes here, this is actually a preferential ballot. When you get this ballot, please write in preferential ballot form, like your Hugo Awards ballot, one, two, three, and four. If you just put three check marks, your ballot will not count. If you put a single check box mark, that will count as a single vote of number one and nothing else. But uh, go ahead and take these ballots and begin uh, filling them out. Uh, the Committee of Tellers is Mr. McIntosh, and uh, I don't even have to say Mr. Dashoff the Elder, actually. <laughs> As the younger is back home. Actually, I believe he's in Montreal. Is he now? He has been sending pot shots via Twitter here. Uh, there are, there are uh, a few minutes here. The, uh, the meeting will stand at ease while the voting goes on. Oh, I don't know Oh, is this the... I do have a pound down here. Where, are the, where, the, where did the blank ballots end up? They're, they're, We're still passing they're, they're still being passed out. Raise your hand if you still need a ballot. Yeah, the, the, the tellers and ballots are coming back down. So that's because it's, it's, they're still coming down that aisle. Yes? Point of order? No, do not fill. It's too hard to read. Put it off to the left side of the checkbox. Put if you are voting, write a number to the left of the checkbox. Do not try to fit numbers into the checkboxes unless you really want your ballot to not count. For what purpose is it? The member has a question. Stand up, please. Speaking as one of the judges, please only fold your ballot once. All right. The tellers have asked you to fold your ballot. 
once, thus. Is there any other? Is there anybody else in the room who desires to vote who has not yet received a ballot? I see one hand over here, one hand over there, on the on these, my left. Is there somebody over here who does not? If you already have voted and wish to hand it in, I'm not. Thank you. The tellers are Mr. Dashaw and Mr. McIntyre. You ballot won't tell. Thank you so well to that. Stanley and uh, 
And because uh, he has so, some sympathy for the job of it, the uh, appoints Kevin Stanley as the chair unless the committee decides to pick somebody else. Next is item E, <coughs> 2 the WorldCon Letters Guide to the Editorial Committee, Mr. Wilma. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we made a little bit of progress this year. However, we've had problematic access or lack of access to the site where it's hosted. And we'd like to recommend that we move it to another site under WISPIS control, for example, uh, WISPIS.org or some other equivalent site. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's not much else to report at this time. Very good. The chair reappoints the incumbent members to the committee if they're willing to serve and authorizes Mr. Wilmoth to appoint other people to the committee at his discretion. And uh, you should consult, the committee should consult with the Human Awards <coughs> Marketing Committee if you want to try and move stuff over to other domains. Any questions? No. Yes. I think the was oh, is excellent. Uh, again, if you're going to ask a question, you, if you're asking a question, yeah. What was the question? It wasn't the question. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Consult with the Hugo Awards Marketing Committee, which actually manages the websites in question. Okay, the, what's next here? Yes. Next is the Formulation of Long List Entries Committee, or FOLLY. This is the group that keeps track of the long list of world cons and uh, tries to accumulate information on attendance figures in all the myriad ways that it is possible to measure them. Uh, the committee's report is in here. The committee recommends that it be continued as currently constituted. Is there any objection to doing so? Seeing none, the committee has continued. On the case of the YA Award Study Committee, I forget, was the, <coughs> I lost track, was the committee asking to be continued as well? No. I didn't think so. Yeah. So it doesn't really, its report is included in here and is implicitly part of the debate on the YA Award. Uh, this committee will uh, sunset, it will dissolve at the end of this world conference. That's E32 taken care of. Mr. Chair? Yes? The, God, the member will come to the podium. You've got to speak into the microphone. Terry, I'm Terry Neal, and I would like to thank the YA committee for all of their work. Thank you. All right. Next is E41, which is the No Vanishing Business Committee report, which was, there's now, you've got a separate handout on a separate sheet for E.3. This is a standing rule change that was uh, referred to a committee for a proposed new wording. The wording they recommend is to change the, is to move in. Move, okay, the secretary has asked me to wait for a moment. Moved to amend the standing rules by inserting the following sentence after the first sentence in Rule 2.1. Before I read that, when you registered, you received a pamphlet that was probably inserted into your souvenir book. It looks like this. This is the WISP of standing rules. If you want to see the rest of Rule 2.1, you need to go look it up in the standing rules. The new material to, that is at, uh, moved to be inserted is proposed agenda items may be withdrawn by the consent of all proposing members at any time up to two weeks before the published deadline for submitting new business. A list of such withdrawn business must be made available to the membership. Currently, the deadline for submitting new business to the business meeting is two weeks before the first business meeting. It is common for advanced copies of the agenda with materials submitted early to be circulated online. This, would, this rule would allow anything proposed and circulated to be withdrawn 
up to four weeks before the first business meeting, but during the two weeks between there, before the final deadline, you could no longer withdraw business. But withdrawing business would have to be made available as part of the documentation of the meeting so that people could see what was withdrawn. Yes. Ms. Neal, is this a question about the effect of the rule? Uh, yes. Okay. You said that the um, withdrawal needed to be published two weeks before. And I thought the intent of this was to make sure people knew things had been withdrawn so they could resubmit them. So if it's published two weeks before, then they can't resubmit them because it's after the deadline. Yeah. Well, two weeks before the deadline. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> let's, let's, the chair will try, that, try explaining this again. Let's work backwards from the, from the business meeting. We start with the preliminary business meeting working backwards. Two weeks before the business meeting is the point, the final point where you can submit new business. The agenda is frozen at that point. Two weeks before that is the last opportunity for withdrawing a motion that you have submitted prior to that. Anything that is withdrawn, the, the, anything that is withdrawn would still have to be mentioned in the documentation for the business meeting, which would continue to be updated periodically. So if you're try, you trying to say somebody withdraws something, the agenda would be updated with it if something was withdrawn, and there would be a two-week period between the last time you can withdraw it and the last time you can submit it in case somebody else wanted to resubmit it. Yes, that was what I was getting at. That is what the effect of this rule would be. Are there any other questions? Uh, question, uh, let me see. Uh, yes. Renee, come around. Come on, uh, we're, uh, what, how much time did we have on it? Okay, I'm going to add, take one more question and then we're going to set the date time on it. This is just for clarification. Does this mean that any business submitted, submitted before the four week deadline and the two week deadline cannot be withdrawn? It means that the business submitted before the four week deadline can be withdrawn, but should, but has to be indicated that it was withdrawn. No, I understand. I'm talking about business submitted after the four week deadline, but before the two week deadline. That's correct. After the four week, but before the two week, you cannot withdraw it. All right. We have now, now I, I, at this point, I want to begin debate on this motion. And for, uh, since people seem to want to ask lots of questions, we have a limited amount of time. The chair suggests six minutes total. The secretary is trying to get caught up. The chair suggests six minutes total. Is there, is there any objection to six minutes? Yes. All those in favor of six minutes, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The <laughs> has it at six minutes is the time limit. In favor and again, uh, split evenly in favor and against. At this point, a, a speech in favor of the, of the um, rule is in order. Uh, yes. Uh, Six. Six minutes. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kate Secor, and I was the mediator of the committee that formulated this rule. We appreciate the desire of people to not say, oh, I don't need to think about this because someone else has already submitted it, and we know it'll come up, and then get to the meeting and go, where did that go? which is why we set the separate deadline for withdrawing business. However, there are cases where six months out, somebody says, I think we should have the best cat picture together. <laughs> and then they think about it, and they think about it, and they argue about it, and they argue about it. And actually, that's a terrible idea. Let's not do that. And it didn't seem worth wasting the meeting's time killing it off once we get to the meeting, when we could just permit people to withdraw it. So this seems to strike the best balance between letting people withdraw a business that they've decided is a bad idea without making it so that you can submit something and then the day before say, oh no, we're just not going to do that and disappoint people who were actually looking forward to discussing that thing. So I urge the meeting to pass this in Here, here. Speech against the goal with you. The chair reminds people that it is actually quite difficult for him to see anything outside of this wedge. So if you were to that side or that side, I may have a hard time seeing you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I understand, there is no time frame specified 
with how much notice the members must be given of withdrawn business. And so it would be technically possible for someone to withdraw business, but the members not to get any notification in sufficient time to be able to put that up. And I would request the uh, uh, Chairman's assistance in amending this to put some sort of time frame in for that purpose. Yes, Mr. Eastlake. Okay. Like one brief comment there. There is currently no, it is not common and there's no standard method to give any member notice of submitted business. Yes, Mr. Mr. Eastlake is correct on this. Um, the chair declines to participate in the, in the, in the, in the member's request. Uh, if the member wants to try and do something like try and craft something on the floor or refer it to a committee for study next year, it's up to you. I'll con I'll re I'll re recognize you if you would if you want to do something. I'll let someone else go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, someone to speak in favor of the, because I, I consider that a, a, a speech against it, someone to speak in favor of the change. Ms. Uh, Ms. Hayes. I wish to call the question. Second. Um, th this is a motion to close the debate and bring the item to a vote. Is there anybody, this is not voting right here, this next question is uh, by a show of hands, is there anybody else who wishes to speak to this motion for, against, or in any way? Show of hands. Uh, the member will state their point of order. Um, the member will come to the microphone and state their point of order. Joshua Prenegold. Um, if uh, is there any point in this um, uh, call to question in which a motion to amend is in order? No. 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 What? No. no. Uh, is it when, uh, call the question is not in order, and if and if it is passed, the motion is uh, the the the, mode, the debate is ended, and you cannot make further amendments to it. And so the, the call the question you know, takes priority over motions to amend. The motion to close debate is is very high ranking and outranks amend, outranks all the other motions. Yeah. Thank so you. Just so double check that. That is the point. Yeah, it's, that's parliamentary inquiry text. Turns out, but yes, the motion to call the question, previous question in debate, however you want to call it outranks almost everything. A two, okay, let me try again. Is there anybody in this room, by show of hands, who wishes to speak for, against, or neutrally toward, about this question? Thank you. All those in favor of ending the debate and bringing the motion to a vote, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, raise your hands. Hands down. There being two thirds in the affirmative, the question is called, the debate is ended. The item before us is the adoption of the no vanishing business motion here to add the text that you see here that would put in an additional two weeks prior to the final deadline for submitting business for the period of withdrawing. A inquiry, the member will come to the microphone and state her inquiry. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, are we voting to accept the committee motion of the amendment by substitution, or are we voting to actually make the amendment? The chair took this as an assumed, that we assume that this is the, the substitution. We're voting on whether to adopt this rule. Thank you. Is there anybody unclear on this? This is a vote. If you vote in favor, you're voting to make this part of the standing rules. If you vote against, you're voting, on, you're voting to say, let's make no changes. Is there anyone unclear on what the vote is? Just raise your hand if you don't know. Thank you. A majority being necessary to adopt this rule. All those in favor of adopting item D.3, no vanishing business, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, raise your hands. Hands down. The affirmative has it. Item E3 is adopted and uh, will take effect affecting next year. This meeting is in recess for one minute. We have enough time to do item C.3. Two years are enough. Move to amend the Constitution by striking out inserting text to strike out the words or the immediate, uh, yes, or the immediately following WorldCon, uh, provided that the members of the 2019 WorldCon will re retain their nominating rights in the 2018 WorldCon, uh, Hugo Awards. Currently, the members of the previous, current, and following year's WorldCons ha uh, have the right to nominate for the Hugo Awards. This would remove the right from the following year's Worldcon members, with the exception of the members of the 2019 Worldcon who will be grandfathered in as a transition period. Uh, Mr. Harris. 
Oh, eight minutes is the debate time. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In a similar way to the last motion, what we sought to do here was to simplify the administration process um, and look at things on a practical basis. If we think about the three years, typically the combined pool of last year and current year is some thousands of voters. If we think how many extra voters do you get by adding in the new uh, year end plus one? Most of those people have basically voted inside selection to become members at that time. And year end plus one has only been in place for a few months. So those people are already members of the con that they had to join to participate in site selection. So in reality, you know, look at the data suggests that only people who have newly joined the Future Years World Con and who were not members of either of previous two are benefiting from this extra um, opportunity. And that may be 50 people, it may be 100 people, but it means we have to merge three data sets and two of those are data sets that are moving up to the um, cutoff day. So we feel that a lower handful of people may miss out in that one year. Um, it's simply not worth the amount of effort. It's also worth pointing out that when we expanded the franchise to three years, we were having some struggles with you know, getting enough people engaged with the Hugos. And obviously, thanks <laughs> <laughs> Even prior to some of the more challenging events, you know, the work of uh, the Hugo Wars Marketing Committee and various administrators going back to around 2009-10, there was a very steady upward trend in a number of nominators. And I don't think, regardless of the puppy investment uh, interest and all the rest, we do not have any current problems with finding enough nominators. So I would recommend that we support this. Here, here. Okay, speech against Dr. Adams. While having been part of the uh, Hugo administration group uh, in previous years, uh, I'm sympathetic to the plea to make their job simpler. I feel that when we have a world con in a new place, we get a new bunch of people. And some of those join fairly soon after that world con is seated. Um, we want to bring those people into the family as soon as possible. And Hugo Awards is one of our most high profile elements. We don't want to have those people to have to wait another year before getting involved. We want them involved in the Worldcon family, thinking about the upcoming Worldcon, not just the one they've, they've joined, possibly joining that one, because they've joined their local one, they think, oh, maybe I'll go next year as well. Um, so uh, while I understand the, uh, and, and sympathise with the administrative points, I think we should be looking to bring those maybe just 50 or 100 people in to the Worldcon family as early as possible. <laughs> Speech in favor. Another. Uh, uh, Mr. Wallace. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Thank you. Dave Wallace. Yes. Yeah, Dave Wallace. Oh. Yeah. 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 Dave Wallace. I just wanted to respond to that uh, last uh, comment that um, anybody who is newly drawn into the Worldcon um, family it would certainly have the option to take out a um, uh, not sustaining membership, so supporting. supporting membership, thank you, uh, in, in the uh, current year's Worldcon and not only get to nominate but get to actually vote on the Hugos and for a relatively small expense. And so I don't think it would have that great an impact. Certainly that information could be made available to people who are doing the future years world common. But I don't see that as an objection to why we shouldn't pass this uh, amendment. Speech against, uh, let me see now. Uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Walling, you can come up here or over there as you wish. <coughs> So while the number of 50 to 100 members um, has been mentioned, uh, some of you may know I kind of collect statistics about uh, World Cup memberships. And one of the things that uh, I've looked at is um, a lot of people, uh, when the World Cup is in new place, will join the World Cup two, two years previous for the purpose of voting for site selection, hoping to bring the World Cup locally. I think, I believe uh, we can see a lot of Finns joining the supporting members to bring uh, Worldcon 75 to Helsinki, 
And these people will often join too late to nominate and perhaps even too late to vote on the Hugos on the year that they're a member of. And so, um, oh, I'm trying to so, so the thing is that it improves their chance. Basically, if they, if they can be brought in to the fold earlier by being supporting members and being allowed to nominate earlier, they'll have more involvement in the process for a longer period of time, and so eventually get to participate more in the World Fund and go to more of them. Um, I believe that the idea that yes, they can just buy supporting membership is not enough to uh, withdraw the uh, third world, third world con eligibility. Here, here. That was that was a speech against ratification. Yes. One minute twenty seconds remains in favor. Uh, Mr. Kowalczyk, were you meaning to speak in favor? Okay, if you can come to come to a microphone. You can come around to the front here if you wish. To. Whatever works for you. You can stand here if you would. Um, so two things, speech in favor. Okay. Here. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Speech in favor. Uh, if people have joined... There we go. No, 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 no. Right. If people have joined a uh, year before to vote, they'd already be uh, eligible because they've joined the year before. And we need to do the best job we can. We have to stop doing everything possible and doing a bad job of it. Better to do a few things well and have only two years of people voting than try to do everything and have three years of people voting and drive ourselves crazy. Thank you. What, what, I believe what I was, what I was trying to explain to people that if you do take the handheld mic and stand in front of where I am pointing right here, yeah, you can stand about right here, just right here in front of me, in order to stay in the camera shot. Thank you. I mean, I don't have to be on the test. A speech against? Uh, like, I, I was going to call Mr. White, actually. So. Oops. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, three things. First of all, Actually, the numbers involved with taking on the following year's membership are not that great. The real hassle is merging the previous year's membership and the current year's membership. With the following year's membership, it's only a few hundred extra. The question is, is that little bit of extra work worth it in terms of the extra visibility that we give to the extra participation that we give to members? The second point, this is a marketing opportunity for the world's come for the following year to start bringing in people Again, saying join us now and you will get nomination rights in next year's Hugo's and the voting rights in the Hugo's uh, the year after. This so means for people to boost membership, to boost participation, we shouldn't have taken it away. A final point, I think it looks bad for this meeting to be restricting the franchise. Thank you. There's about a minute left in favour. Oh, 50 seconds in favour. I'm left again. Who, uh, do you have problems uh, standing, Steve? Yeah. Okay, so I, I, in that case, uh, uh, yes. If this is in favor, yes, okay. Yeah, it's as much data as I think. And I when saw this was coming up, I looked back at the Doncon data, and there were 117 new names uh, added to the voting for when we were the two years ahead, we added to it. I got a mention of about 7,000 in the end. So more information, but I agree with it. That the numbers, infra life information for a long time, just too small, and that was worthwhile. All question? Uh, a speech in against the motion, Mr. Cronengold. Oh, no, actually, I, you, yeah, you didn't actually have the floor when I uh, said when you called that out. So I'm going to call on on you. You can't just yell out, call the question. You have to be recognized to do to do the vote. Uh, I am sympathetic to the complexities of merging the membership lists. I would just like to point out that having ratified uh, C.2 December is good enough and provided an additional 31 days that we do have the ability to merge and enfranchise as many of our members as possible to nominate the Hugo Awards. There is less than one minute of a debate time remaining. The motion to call the question is not in order. Does anyone else wish to still speak to this motion? Point of order. Uh, point of order? Yes, that's a good point. I've right. got to remember, you should be calling saying your names, even if this is not the first time you've spoken. Um, Mr. Yellow. Tell that you're speaking in, in favor, correct? In favor. Yes. Of which you have about 40, 30 seconds. 
In fact, I think it provides an in oh, sorry, Benny Allo. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. That's what it says on the name badge. I prefer the idea that there is a marketing incentive to say the people who want to be able to actually vote on this thing, join. It provides an incentive to join because you get greater rights. Therefore, I believe that the marketing works in the other direction. That's about it. Time, time for debate in favor of the motion has expired. There's about, what, 30 seconds left on the other side. 40 seconds left to speak against. Without objection, we'll bring it to a vote. Very well. On the motion to ratify item C.3. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, come, come to the microphone, Mr. Chair. I did not see you stand up. I'm, I'm moving pretty fast. I'm aware of that. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, before, with Matthews, before you read the resolution, should it be modified because we have passed the previous one? The uh, chair points out that just because you see the context of the change showing uh, the existing text doesn't mean this motion is changing something back. The motion only is changing the words that are being struck out or added. It is not reverting previous changes. The answer to your question is no. Thank you. I did On the motion to ratify item C.3 to strike out text uh, to basically remove the right of uh, the following year's WorldCon members to nominate, allowing for the grandfathering of the 2019 WorldCon voters. A majority is necessary to ratify this. All those in favor of ratifying C.3, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, raise your hands. It's close, but the chair believes the affirmative has it. Call for a division. Very well, then we'll do it. We'll do a serpentine vote on this. I need the handheld mic for this one. As we discovered yesterday, we cannot go all the way back and forth across the room, and therefore, uh, the chairs. Uh, we're going to go first this section of the room, then this section of the room, then this section of the room for the affirmative. And, uh, you want, and let's start with the head table. Okay. All right. So all those in favor of ratifying C.3, please rise. Uh, those of you who can rise, you can raise your hand we'll get this one. I am not voting. So we'll start with the head table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What come back up to the front? Back up to the front. 12 is where we started. 13. 14. 15. 16. 17. 18. 19. 20. 21. 22. 23. 24. 25. 26. 27. 28. 29. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 35, and we'll back up to the front. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Do we have 45? Thank you. Those opposed to this ratification, please rise. And we'll start on the head table with. One, two, oh, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Uh, 15, oh, I'm sorry. 15 back there, up to the front here, please. Another uh, front here, please. Oh, I'm sorry. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 27. 28. 29. Are you standing, Michael? Yeah. 30. <laughs> 31. 32. 2. And then wait till she gets around here. 36. If once you said your number, sit down. 37. 38. 39. 40. 41. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
on this vote, the affirmative is 45 and the negative is 41. The magic motion is ratified and takes effect, first effecting next year, except that the 2019 members are grandfathered and therefore in practice it takes effect uh, in 2019. We have now reached 11 o'clock where we have set a general order for the YA uh, committee. The chair thinks it would be a good time to take a recess at this point and therefore it's 11.07. Um, I'm going to shoot for 11.15, but it's probably going to be a little bit late. It's a short recess. This meeting is in recess until at least 11.15. It is 11.15 and the meeting will return to order. By previous order, the next item is C.11, the Young Adult Award, which begins on page 21. This would ratify the creation of a new award, not a Hugo Award, but a, an award sanctioned in the Constitution for a young adult uh, science Fiction and Fantasy Award. The committee that created it has also introduced a, what is known, item C.11.1, what they're calling a cleanup amendment that uh, strikes out material about the blanks in the motion regarding a name for the award. After due consideration, they decided that it was, uh, and by the way, the chair was going to rule that, uh, that, that it was a, a greater change if it, uh, if if we tried to fill the blank there anyway. Um, the chair will rule that the motion is a lesser, is, it does not increase the scope, you use the correct, correct words, if adopted, C.11.1 does not increase the scope of the amendment and therefore can, if passed, and then the whole thing ratified, can take effect following next year. Um, so the item immediately before us is the amendment, C.11.1, to strike out the blank and the provision regarding the blank from the rather pending constitutional amendment. Does anyone have a question about what I what I just said there about what, what's before us? Thank you. Is there anyone who wishes to debate this in favor or against? Very, very well. Ed, is this a question or just a, a debate? Sort of debate. Okay, in that case I want to I, I recognize uh, somebody in yeah, yeah. The, in preference of the, on the committee, uh, in favor of the amendment. Of the oh, there she is. I thought you were over there. We're, we're over there no, I, I apologize. There are four minutes of debate on the Young Adult Award amendment. So this is a, this is a speech in favor of the amendment to strike out the provisions and blank. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks. Okay, so um, just to reiterate why we are making this provision, my name is Katie Rask. Um, we discovered by uh, following everyone in their discussions online that um, there was a lot of procedural and parliamentary and constitutional debate about this issue. And so we listened to everybody and we tried to reach a compromise here and we thought that this was the best way to respond to everybody's concerns. So the, the deal is, is that the provision, the amendment goes into the Constitution if it is ratified but the provision would not actually go into effect until the end of the meeting. So, uh, the end of Worldcom this year. So the one year vote won't actually happen until next year. So, that is why we just thought it's best to take that out. Don't worry about it, and if we're gonna name it, name it using the normal constitutional methods with a two year vote. Um, and so this allows us to pass the award. It'll just be nameless for now and then immediately after, in the next few minutes, we'll begin the naming process. So that's what the, the second amendment is for. So please vote uh, along those lines. Thanks. Speech, speech against Dr. Lurie. Okay, but just take, wait, hold off. Your, your time doesn't start until you recognize the secretary is trying to get caught up. We are on item C.11.1, the amendment. Uh, <coughs> clean up the middle. Dr. Lurie. Okay, I'm still Perry Ann Lurie. Um, so, if I understand this correctly, we, were gonna have, we will have a, an award that is not a Hugo Award, that has no name, but is for, un, is, is for young adult stuff for at least a year. But there is no requirement that we actually name it ever. Um, and I am concerned. Uh, 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 
Uh, point of order. Well, the member, point of order. I believe this is out of order. That the is, member will state. The member will state their point of order. You can just hold them. speak it. What, what does the member say? Joshua Chronicles. Yes. Um, I believe that Dr. Laurie is debating the substance of the underlying amendment. No, I'm the not. Member, ah, you do not. The, the members are definitely reminded. Do not speak to each other across the room. Sorry. Address all of your comments through the chair. The member's point of order is not well taken. The member is addressing whether or not we should try and do something about naming as, it, as the underlying motion currently exists. Very well. Dr. Lurie, continue, please. So if I'm reading this correctly, we may have, we may be stuck with a nameless award that we cannot have a service mark on for young adults, something to do with science fiction and fantasy uh, for the indefinite future. Um, and I'm, with the blank in there, it says you have to come up with a name. And, and so that is why I'm concerned about this amendment. All right, very well. Speech in favor of the amendment, Mr. Kroningal. Um, it has been ruled that the, uh, that one, uh, one part of this uh, award, one would get added to, added to the Constitution and is two completely non-functional. Uh, because it is self-contradictory. Um, the other thing is that the blank doesn't force us to come up with the award. If we pass it with the blank, um, then we end up award, we have to give out the blank award, um, which is just awful. Um, we can debate uh, whether we were willing to pass it um, as a nameless award uh, once we have um, dealt with this amendment, but what we have right now is not uh, a useful award to pass because nobody wants to give out the blank award. Let's well, contract it down to something that's passable this year, and then we can talk about whether we want to do a greater change, or a sunrise, or a sunset, or a filler on the roof, or whatever, um, later. First, we want to have a clean thing we can consider. Time for a debate in favor of the amendment has expired. Speech against? Yes. About a minute 40 against. Uh, this, wait. 40 seconds against, I believe, right? 40 seconds Ooh. against, uh, yes. Ms. Seacorp. My name is Kate Seacorp. We've been told by the committee sponsoring this award that the naming of this is contentious. So that implies to me that we're not going to be able to name this award without several years of discussion and discussion and discussion. Meanwhile, we're giving out the award. Which award? Are you getting a Golden Duck? Are you getting a Campbell? Are you getting a New Brewery? What award are you getting? Oh, you're getting some award from the Worldcon. I don't think that's good for the Worldcon. I don't think it's good for the Hugos. I don't think it's good for the people who are getting the award. I would rather say we have to name the thing or we can't pass it. I believe debate time has now expired. Yeah. Um, the chair does point out that the award would simply be called the Young Adult Award. Just a moment. Answering your question raised here, the naming matter is something later in the agenda that will actually come up later if this thing gets ratified. On the question to strike out the provision and the blanks from the pending constitutional change, a majority being necessary. All those in favor of striking out the blank and the provision, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the affirmative has it. The amendment to the ratification passes. The blanks, certain other uh, incidental words, that, uh, and the provision about filling the blank are removed from the proposed constitutional amendment. Therefore, we are now on the debate at last on whether or not to ratify the Young Adult Award, for which we have 20 minutes of debate time. Um, the committee chair, who's, who's speaking for the committee? This is time for your report, I believe. It's a good yet, this is your chance. This is your first speech in favor. Uh, for uh, this, and it would probably be best if you used the text on page 22, which is, ignoring the struck out text, is the actual text we are voting on whether to ratify or not. Hello again, uh, my name is Katie Rask, and I am one of the assistant chairs for the uh, committee this year. Um, the main chair, um, Anna Bloomstein, actually couldn't come uh, to Helsinki this year, and the other assistant, 
uh, chair, whose name is Helen uh, Bala. She couldn't come either. So I'm sort of representing the, the triple chairs, I guess. Um, so we, we did have a committee report, and so I can go over some of it now, um, if you'd like. Uh, when it comes to the naming, I think you all know that this is uh, a big issue. We've been debating it forever. Um, uh, Ms. Rask, yes. please do not discuss the naming. It is out of the okay. scope of this I will, debate, I will not other talk. than whether, you know, about the, the bad idea of a, if it's a bad idea to pass a naming support, but please. Okay. The question is whether we should adopt the award. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I think there, we have provided plenty of evidence over the last few years that um, this is a award that is very much needed, and in fact, um, we have lots of different parliamentary means um, that we can deal with uh, the nameless issue. So I think it's most important that we get the award passed. Um, it uh, will be called, as you can see here, the Award for Best Young Adult Book. And um, you know that will be its temporary title. And if we then move on to the next amendment, we begin uh, the further stages of the process. So I think there's plenty of opportunity for that now. So I think um, let's all finally get this award voted. It's um, uh, it's much needed, and um, I ask you guys to consider it uh, in a positive light. The chair does wish to remind members that it does include a provision that it would need to be re-ratified by the 2021 business meeting, and that it is automatically placed on the agenda as a question at that time. A speech against, uh, sorry, yes? Uh, you better come to the microphone then. Motion. This is against it. About here. About here. A little bit further. You can stand in front of me, it's okay. Please do. to add a sunrise clause such that the award need not be given out until a name has been assigned to it. I second the motion. That's to add a provision that, provided that this amendment shall not take effect until such time as a, a specific name has been given to it. Need not. Or will not be. Or need, not. Need, not. need not be given, so that would leave it up to the, that's intending to leave it up to the discretion of the individual Shall. roll con committee? Yes. Shall. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to suspend the rules for a second order amendment to change the need to shall. Is there any objection to changing need to shall? Yes. yes. I thought so. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there a second to the member's motion to allow a second order amendment? Second. A two-thirds vote being necessary to suspend the rules to allow <laughs> the motion. Yes? Mr. Chair, can you quickly yeah. state what we're voting on, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I lose track of names. Um, Cliff Dunn. Cliff Dunn is the person the secretary's trying Let us, now, the, the parliamentary staff is three deep now, so I have to explain <laughs> this. There's a constitutional amendment down at the bottom of the stack. Uh, the C Corps has moved to add a provision provided that this award need not be presented until such time as a specific name has been given to it. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Mr. Dunn has moved to suspend the rules to allow him to make a second order amendment to strike out the word need and insert shall. It takes a two-thirds vote to even allow him to make that motion. Two-thirds being necessary to allow the introduction of the motion. All those in favor of allowing the introduction of the motion, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. There is less than two-thirds in the affirmative. The motion to suspend the rules fails. The question before the meeting is the adoption of a provision. Um, do we have? Did, I, did you get the word here? Did I go too fast? Way too fast, yeah. Let me try it again as slowly as I can here. Provided that this award need not be presented until such time as a specific name for the award has been adopted. Am I correct? Is that statement? Is that correct? Yes. And, and there was a second. Uh, is there a second? Okay, there was a second. The member has a parliamentary inquiry. Will the member come to a microphone and state it, please? And state your name when you get to the microphone. 
Steve, would, would this be a greater change for the amendment? That's a, yeah, it's a good question. Good question. I, while I was wording it, the chair was considering it, and the chair rules that, does, that it does not increase the scope of the amendment. It does not increase the scope of the amendment, which would allow it to be ratified here. I don't hear an appeal, so I'm going to go over. We're going to go with that. Uh, Mr. Cooper. Uh, parliamentary inquiry. Um, okay. Parliamentary inquiry. This may be just a difference between U.S. and English, British English, but presented does tend to indicate that it won't be presented at this, this ceremony. Um, I'd have thought awarded would be a more correct word. Yeah, that's probably correct. Let's, let's that's change right. presented to awarded. Yeah, okay, to change presented to awarded in the text. It, it, that was the intent, certainly. We don't actually have to hold a Hugo ceremony. <laughs> We have to hold this meeting, but there we go. <laughs> All right, the chair has ruled that the provision can be adopted without requiring a further year of ratification. Ms. Secor, you wish to speak in favor of your amendment. Uh, five minutes debate time, which comes out of the underlying debate. Uh, All right. I am still Kate Secor. I believe that there is sufficient concern that this amendment I certainly have sufficient concern about giving out a nameless award that allowing the Worldcons to make the decision that they don't think a nameless award is great either without blocking the creation of the award entirely is probably a pretty good idea. Anyone wishing to speak against? And I'm going to actually call on you. I'm trying to catch the, the, the edges. So. Just, uh, Mr. Peterson. David Peterson. Uh, first, I would ask you to actually look at the text of 3.x. If you'll note, what the text says is a word for best young adult book, and all of the words are capitalized. I believe that even if this amendment passes, it wouldn't matter because it does have a name, because names are usually indicated by capital letters. The uh, question will just be if we want to give it a different name, a name later. Uh, but All right, the member will hold up for a moment. Are you raising a point of order about that? I was also going to say something else. Yes. Well, the point is is that as you're, you may be making a point of order that the amendment is out of order as irrelevant. Is that correct? I mean, as opposed to because... Actually, I suppose you're right. Yeah. Yeah. The chair rules the point of order not well taken. Uh, the clear intent is to have a name in, uh, as opposed to the just generic name of a award for best young adult book, but to add a specific name to it. And therefore, the chair rules the point of order not well taken. Don't yeah. to that. Can I still okay, debate please continue that? with your debate against the motion. Okay. Um, but second, I think actually if we were to just present the award for best young adult book, um, I don't think that would be too bad. The alternative is that we have yet another year, or perhaps any number of years, without an award as we decide what the award will be called. And I think that if you polled those who write young adult fiction and those who read it and those who are interested in this award, and asked them, would you rather have an award that's just called the award for best? The member award? will, what, for what purpose does the member rise? The, the raise, member is raising a point of order and will come to a microphone to state his point of order. Hi, I am Perky Raj Kangre, or PRK. Uh, point of order, the respected member, Mr. Chairman, is debating the underlying motion and not Ms. Secor's amendment that should be debated. The member's point of order is not well taken. The debate is on is, is relevant and germane to the underlying question. I mean, to the uh, pending question. So, okay. yeah. thank you. Again, to my point, I think that they would rather have an award with a generic name then no award at all. And that, I think, is the point of the amendment. Thank you. Here. All right, Dr. Lurie, in favor of the amendment. The problem is, it's not a Hugo Award, and it's not the John W. Campbell Award, so it's just an award for, yes, young adult book, given out by who the hell knows what it's from. It does, it's not the Wispus Award for Best Young Adult Book, it's just an award for Best Young Adult Book. And, I'm sorry, and so, it's, it's an award without a name. 
And if the administering world comes wants to do that, they're still permitted to, but it sort of holds a gun to our heads to really, really come up with a name. Yes, the chair wants to make it explicit that this wording allow, uh, does not prohibit a world con from giving it, but does not require it to give it until such time as a specific name is given. A uh, speech in favor of the amendment, I believe. Okay. Right? Okay. No, no, I'm sorry, against, I apologize. Uh, another part of the member will state their parliamentary inquiry. Come to, if you get up on this side of the room, you don't need a handheld mic. Go to the lectern. It's only over here where you need it. Okay, go on. Is, is that correct, that it can't be called the WISPUS uh, award for YA? No. The chair declines to, to say it. Name. Get the name. Yes. Get, bring your badge over to the secretary, if you would. The chair declines to state an opinion on this subject and leaves it up to the administering convention. Oh, gosh. You've got, you got to get it. Mr. Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, right around here in front of me. Still playing the apple. Uh, I actually agree in general with the idea of Kate that we should not get out a name with the board, but we can't have a second order amendment we defined that earlier. Therefore, my suggestion is that we defeat Kate's amendment and immediately then replace the, with an amendment that said shall rather than may. And that way we get clear guidance that says don't give out an award without a may and postpone it until we decide on the name. The answer to the member's unstated parliamentary inquiry is yes, such a motion would be in order. <laughs> <laughs> a moment on the time, please. Uh, We're halfway through. We've got half the debate time remains. Half the debate time remains. I call it uh, a speech. Well, actually, uh, Ms. Hayes, which you? I wish to call the question. Yeah, second. That's a, a that's a motion to end the debate on the pending provision amendment only. Uh, it's not debatable, but how many people still wish to speak about the amendment to add the provision? Just raise your hands as you want to speak for or against it. What is the no? I'm going to call it. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm not going to take the query. I'm going to move the, on the motion to end the debate only on the amendment to add provision. A two-thirds vote being necessary to end the debate. All those in favor of ending that debate, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, raise your hands. Hands down. There being two thirds in the affirmative, the debate is ended on the amendment only. This is an amendment to add a provision to make it permissible for future world cons to not give out this award until such time as a specific name is added to it. Those in favor of adding this provision, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down, the chair thinks the negative has it. Okay, I'd like a show of hands of how many people want a counted vote. Hands down. The chair rules that there is less than 20% of the members present asking for it, and therefore the chair's call stands as a negative wins. You need 20% in order to call a division. Uh, the negative has it. The amendment fails. Mr. Yellow, did you wish to make an amendment? Still very yellow, and what I propose, I am therefore moving to amend by adding a proviso, the same as Kate's, except using the word shall instead of may. And in that case, I want to wait for the secretary to cut and paste the. <laughs> Yes, she knows what's going on. I wouldn't keep asking her to do the job if I didn't think she was really, really good at it. I thought she was the only one who said yes. Yeah, there's yes. 
Um, I think that this is the only way we're going to actually get a name for this award, because if we're not forced to do so, I don't think it will happen. And we cannot continually have the generic Young Adult Best Book Award. We need to have a name for this award. A moment, I'll check the time on that. <coughs> about a minute in favor, about a minute, 20 against. Uh, against? Against the amendment? Yes, against the amendment. Okay, yes. Name again when you get David. there. All right. David Peterson, uh, and I would note that luckily we have time on the schedule already provisioned for having a name for this award right after we're done with the vote here. I think there's plenty of time, and I think that it will happen. Thank here, you. here. Here, here. This is against? In favor. Yeah, in favor, right, sorry, it was against, but yeah, in favor. <coughs> Cliff Dunn, first of all, just because we have time on the agenda doesn't mean that we will actually succeed in passing a title, as anybody who's attended these meetings can probably attest. Second, I understand that not wanting the perfect to be the enemy of the good. I don't want the half-baked to be the enemy. I, I want the half-baked to be the enemy here. I don't want this to be half-baked, and... I am concerned that what we will see instead is three or four world cons in a row with different slapping different names on the awards or getting a de facto name attached that we have no control over and then three or four years in, well, it's been this for four years. I guess we have to adopt the name that's in use. Um, so please, let's do this right. Thank you. One more against, I think, if anyone wants it. Mr. Cronengold. Still Joshua Kronbold. If we're going to, uh, we shouldn't put dangling elements in the Constitution. If we want to wait until we have a name, just do a greater change and push it for another year, rather than putting something into the, um, into the Constitution that doesn't do anything until we pass another amendment to the Constitution. Is there any, obje is there any objection to ending the debate and calling the, and calling the question on the amendment? In that case, uh, I will I actually have to ask, is there anybody else who still wanted to speak to the question, to the amendment, the meeting, amendment? okay, thank you. In that case, but I, I, there was no objection to calling the question, I just had to, I had to ask if anybody else had wanted, had wanted to speak. Uh, on, the question is called on the immediately pending, there are people who are standing, but the question has been called. Right, for those trying to get, what, excuse me? If we pass this amendment, yes? what is the timeline? The, what is the time? The time actually being able to award. The, 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 the next debate. I'm not going to answer the question. The question is on adopting. It's, the question has been called. No more inquiries. On the amendment only to add a provision that would prohibit this award from actually being presented until a specific name was adopted. Uh, to, uh, a majority being necessary to adopt the amendment. All those in favor of adopting the provision amendment, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. This is close enough that I think I think the negative has it. Division. Division. Okay. Show of hands of who wants a division. Yeah, that's more than 20%. Therefore, on the amendment only, we're going to do a division. Those of you who are in the back of the room need to need to probably take a seat to vote on this because I'm not going to necessarily know that we're not going to necessarily be able to count you. All right. Yes, and if and after you've dealt with that, deal with signing in later. Okay, just a moment. I need to stand up, and I need the microphone for this. For those of you who came in late, this is a serpentine vote. We we're going to ask everybody in a moment in favor of the motion to stand up, and then we will start counting. Ms. Neal, back and forth, please. It works better. Uh, back and forth across this section of the audience and then this section, and then this section, starting at the head table, should anybody vote, want to vote, starting. All those in favor of the amendment only, please stand. The amendment, not the constitutional amendment, but the, the proviso. The proviso is an amendment, not a ratification. This is an amendment to add the provision. Very well. Okay, those in favor of the proviso, starting here. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
Back up in front. 11. 12. 14. 15. 16. 17. 18. 19. 20. 21. 22. 23. 24. 25. 26. 27. 28. 29. 30. Are you standing in the back? 31. 31 was over there. I was 31. 31. And 32. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, that's 32. Let's come up here. Okay. 33. 30, 30. 34. 35. 35. All those opposed to adding the provision for the best number, you can't stand up. Starting up here. One, one. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, text at C.11.1 is, and before I call on anybody, I need to reset the debate time here, because that all that used up some of the underlying debate. There are seven minutes, we used, technically used seven minutes for all those amendments out of the, uh, uh, we have 20 minutes, uh, let's see, uh, seven minutes, 13, 13 minutes remained in total overall. Okay, let, that, that means there's ten. There's actually ten minutes of debate time left on the underlying motion. It, it's even. I'm gonna, I'll, let's set it at ten minutes and evenly split it at that point. Okay. And this meeting needs to recess for one minute. The motion, to, I, the, the chair rules that because of all the things that happened beforehand, we do have to give at least one speech in favor and one against before that motion is in order. All right. There are 10 minutes of debate time remaining on this motion. Uh, split evenly, five minutes to each side. I'd like to call on, who's, who's yeah, there you are. Yeah, I lost you in the, in the fog. I call upon the, the, the effective acting chair of the Y committee to give her spe initial speech in favor of the underlying proposal. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm sorry. I thought we were going to have a, a, a time to do a committee report in the committee portion, and we weren't able to. So I just wanted to clarify the timeline because we had a question about that. If you could just go to the last slide, please. So, um, yes, that one. So these were the steps that we had proposed, and we laid all of this out on the committee report, especially the one that is online that I encourage you all to read because that has much more information than the one that is in the agenda. But so first, as you can see, we're number one, the YA award amendment, discuss whether we remove the provision, vote. Then we will move next to naming the award, which would be a two-year process. So we would set up how we were gonna vote, uh, on the name, the committee um, gave a suggestion, a recommendation for a name, and um, you can see all the names that we received from the public, all 460 of them, they're in this report, um, and they've been researched and vetted, and you can see the results of that. Um, I believe it is on page 45, it's exhibit two in the, the committee report. So we got um, something like 1,200 responses to our name collection surveys, which we did, uh, and then we, as a committee, um, vetted those names. 
So we'll need to set the ballot about whether you guys are going to accept the recommendation of the committee or if you want to then have a real vote and debate. We uh, vote on the name, we tally the votes, and then we vote to pass the award. Very good so, there, but the chair, the chair would like to remind the member that you're using up your debate time in favor of why we should adopt the award at all. Okay, all right. Then um, I just have wanted a lot to. Of time. You do I, know you've made the timeline clear. I think people understand okay. that. Let's move on. Got it. Thank you. you. You do want to speak in favor of why we should adopt it? Okay, all right, fine. Uh, a speech against. Uh, I believe it, it's either a speech against or a uh, Come to the uh, yeah, Mr. Dashoff, yes. This is against ratification, possibly an inquiry of the members. Todd Dashoff. I would like to ask the chair, given... Microphone. Microphone, yes. Todd Dashoff. Given that we have currently, I believe, replaced what we're voting on with the name Best of the Young Adult Book Award or something vaguely equivalent to that. Award for Best Young Adult Book, Thank you. which is what's actually in the motion. If yes. we put the word WISPIS in front of that, would that make it a greater change? That's a parliamentary inquiry. The chair rules that trying to add a name to this award at this stage of the process increases the scope of the award and would require an additional year of ratification. Thank you. Does the member want to speak in the, toward the motion at all? No, I that there was yield point. the floor. Uh, what's that? <laughs> that is an inquiry. Um, speech against ratification. Uh, actually, I'm going to call Mr. Bloom, who had the initial wanted to actually speak against it before the inquiry. Mr. Chairman, my name is Kent Bloom, and I remain, as I was last year, opposed to trying to divide literature into categories by age or type or anything else. I think we need to pick the best of the best and uh, having two awards for essentially the same thing uh, defeats their purpose. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cronengold. I have a tall question. Before I put the question, that is a motion to, is there a, is there a second to the second. motion to today? Thank you. Before I put that question, I'd like a show of hands who in this room still wants to debate this in any way to speak for or against it in some way? Thank you, hands down. A two-thirds vote being necessary to end the debate and bring the ratification to a vote. Raise your hands. Hands down. Those who wish to continue the debate, raise your hands. Hands down. There being two-thirds in the affirmative, the debate is closed. The question is called. On the question, which is in your agenda as, in effect, C.11.1, as worded there, stricken text struck. A majority being necessary to ratify. All those in favor of ratifying C-11-1, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. I think the affirmative has it, but I think you'll be happier if we count it. <laughs> Therefore, we will do another, I'll need the microphone again, and we'll do a division on this. All those who are in favor of ratifying the chain, ready to stand up rapidly. Start on the head table with one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-four, thirty-five. Back to the front if you haven't got it ready. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. 25. 25. Seven, eight, eight. Oh, sorry, eight. Nine. Anyone else? 
I would like to inquire if uh, the member's uh, request uh, for the updated recommendations changes the recommendation of the name that we have just agreed we're going to vote on. I don't think so. We haven't agreed yet. It's not a parliamentary inquiry. You're requiring something of the, of the committee. Please be seated. A two-thirds vote being necessary to temporarily set aside without a set time for picking it up the motion, uh, the, the underlying motion and the blank filling exercise. Uh, For what purpose does the member rise? Um, I believe the chairman has um, misstated the uh, committee that instead it is laying it aside until that um, until the five minute period. That is a okay. uh, That's postponed definitely. That's postponed definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's to postpone it definitely until such time as the committee has had five minutes recognized time to speak. That requires a majority. All those in favor of postponing the motion until after five up to five minutes of, of discussion from the YA committee. All those in favor of that, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, hands down. The affirmative has it. Item D.4 and everything adhering to it is set aside, and the, the YA committee is recognized to speak to us for not more than five minutes at their discretion. Do you have data or do I need data? Okay. Um, so, as a minor correction um, to what was given to the members, 
Uh, first, um, the percentage of um, those in the first survey, which is say the only open survey, asking uh, was not 52%, it was 54%. Um, additionally, um, the, uh, um, when the summary specifies 52% for wanting a name versus 48% not wanting a name, um, that was somewhat um, a... Uh, 40. 40, thank you. Um, that is um, a accidental uh, misrepresentation of the data, given that there were four candidates. What, it's, um, what it was, um, more accurately, without the numbers in front of me, was 54% in favor of a person name, versus the next possibility candidate was somewhere around 25%. Um, and thereby a 25% lead in favor, in a plurality, plurality, of wanting a person's name. Thank you. I believe that exhausts the committee's report. Is this correct? There is nothing else the committee wishes to speak to us for. Therefore, that before us now, by the previous order, is item D.4 with blank in. No, it was a separate page. They, they, they asked for something separate. All right. Talk to me about it later. Yeah, okay. What we are back at is the naming amendment. Once again, the chair's suggestion was that we take an up down vote on, on right. a Thank you, vote. The chair's suggestion is that the meeting vote yes or no on whether to adopt Lodestar as the name to fill the blank. Should the meeting reject that, there will be a blank in the motion and we would begin soliciting choices for a name and Lodestar would be one of them. When, and tomorrow, we would vote by preferential ballot among those names to fill the blank, at which time the, amend, the motion itself would then come back before us with a name. Is there anyone who does not understand the explanation? Can Question. You, can you just clarify when there will be debate time for and against each of the options? It, there, well, it's debatable before the vote. You can debate various names. Uh, do you really want to debate the specific name before I put it to a vote? The first yeah. name, Lodestar? Yeah. Uh, no? I don't know. Well, do, do the members want to debate Lodestar yes or no before we put it to a vote? I want a show of hands. Who, how, who would like to debate yes or no, whether, whether or not we should adopt Lodestar as a name? Thank you. I needed just as a show of hands. Thank you. Therefore, the chair is going to put a question, yes or no, on whether the name to fill the blank should be Lodestar. This does not adopt a name for the award. It just puts the name Lodestar into the motion. All those in favor of adopting? Why doesn't it? Because the, the uh, this fills the blank, but we have but you have to pass the underlying motion in action in order to actually name it. This is not picking the name itself. This is picking what name we will vote on if we choose the name at, at all. Thank you. Is there anybody who does not understand what we're about to vote on? I show of hands. I see none. <laughs> on whether to fill the blank with the word Lodestar. Raise your hands if you're in favor of that. Hands down. If you're opposed to that, raise your hands. Hands down. The affirmative has it. The blank is filled with Lodestar. The question before the meeting is therefore whether to, on, I'm not putting a vote to it now, but the question now before the meeting is item D.4 with the word Lodestar as the potential name for the award and what we are debating, and we can now debate it now rather than putting it off till tomorrow, is whether we should adopt D.4, which has the effect of naming the YA award at Lodestar, if ratified, yes, I know, I haven't gotten to the end of this. <laughs> Let me get to the end of the sentence. If it is ratified next year. Next year's Worldcon would not be, even if we adopt this, next year's Worldcon would not be presenting the Lodestar Award because the award does not have a name. What for, the, I am not going to recognize, do you have difficulty rise standing? Yeah. For what purpose does the member rise? A parliamentary inquiry. Then you will go, can you let me finish the statement before you make your inquiry? We try it again, get to the statement in the statement. The only question, to, the question is going for us is to whether we would adopt this initially. If ratified by next year's Worldcon, it would become the official name of the award, Lodestar. But next year's Worldcon would be presenting a nameless, young, otherwise nameless young adult award. 
Is there anybody who doesn't understand what that? Who has unclear on that? Now, <coughs> then we'll go to the microphone and state as parliamentary inquiry. Hi, I'm James Lundweber, and as I understood it at Mid American, the uh, resolution in favor of creating a YA award specifically specified that naming the award was not going to be a greater change and would that, not that's require enough. Substitute. That's enough. I can address it from right there. The, the members for the clerk. The member may have come in late. Earlier in this meeting, we struck from the pending constitutional amendment all of the material about the name. We struck it out of the motion and then we ratified it. Therefore, the member the answer is no, you cannot name it immediately. And I'm not going to go into why it wouldn't have worked either if you want to see me later today. All right. The question before us is whether to adopt the second the, the name. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yes. Uh, Mr. Cronengold, did you want to speak in favor? Uh, I wish to make a parliamentary inquiry. Another parliamentary inquiry. By the way, you are up all these inquiries are using up the debate time on the whole thing. Mr. Chairman, would it be, um, um, if this committee were to pass a uh, rec um, amendment to this um, naming award to make it retroactive by one year, would that um, name um, would that name the award after it were after it was awarded for the purpose of posterity? I don't believe that we can ad retroactively adopt a name, and therefore that's the chair's ruling is no, it would not retroactively rename the first one given the Lodestar award. Whether or not it would end up being the, the, the first one is, is listed with them is up to the probably the Hugo Awards Marketing Committee to decide. Can I be able to the chair? Yeah. Yeah. The chair's ruling, yeah, the answer is yes, you can, but I don't <laughs> The chair rules that if we were to add a, a provision to the proposed constitutional amendment before us that retroactively names the award, the Lodestar Award, that this name would refer retroactively to any award presented under the YA name at previous world cons. The chair has ruled that it does not because I, the chair believes that we cannot, the chair rules that we cannot retroactively name something. The member wants to appeal the ruling of the chair. Yeah. Is there a, a second to the second, chair? Second, second. Okay. <laughs> this is an appeal. It has five minutes of the debate time which comes out of the underlying material. The way this works is the chair's going to state his reason, and then you, people who want to speak against it can. I began to state it as part of the ruling on that, but the chair believes, in general, not specific to this award, but in general, as a constitutional matter of the World Science Fiction Society, we cannot pass retroactive material. We cannot bind the past, only the future. Who is the, as the maker of the appeal, you are recognized to speak why you believe the chair's ruling is wrong. Um, um, basically, name, I, name please. Uh, Jeff Thorpe. Um, I see no reason why, having, uh, uh, why we can't retroactively name it. it. It seems to be logical that if we pass a, if we award it as the best young adult book, and, and this is awarded as so, we can't immediately after the world gone. So, say we reacted with it, we made it and referred to the award we just awarded as the Low Star Award. Um, me, yeah, sir? come to, come here and so the chair. Mr. Yalvo speaking in favor of the chair's ruling. Right. Uh, actually, no, no. It's a good, there is a good point. Actually, is that there has been one speech in favor and one against. So the motion. I'm going to actually really. There's a motion to end the debate on the appeal only. Is there a second? Second. Are there anybody else who wishes to speak for or against the ruling of the chair? Thank you, hands down. All those in a two-thirds vote being necessary to end the debate on the appeal. All those in favor of ending the debate on the appeal, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, hands down. The uh, there being two-thirds in the affirmative, the question is called. The appeal is, is on the table before us. A a majority in the negative being necessary to overturn the chair. And break space time. A uh, member will please not call out random comments like that. Those who believe the chair's ruling is correct and that we cannot pass a retroactive amendment, raise your hand. 
hands down. Those who want to overturn the chair and allow a retroactive amendment, uh, raise your hands. It's not what it is. No. What? Yeah, I, the question was, shall the chair's ruling be sustained? I'm going to take the vote again because it, I believe there are people who don't understand what we were voting on. <laughs> the question before us is, shall the chair's ruling be sustained? If you believe the chair made the correct ruling, you will vote yes. If you believe the chair made the wrong ruling, you will vote no. Is there anybody who does not understand what they are voting on? Thank you. All those in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair, raise your hands. Hands down. Those in favor of overturning the ruling of the chair, raise your hands. Hands down. A majority in the affirmative, and less than a majority in the negative. The chair's ruling is sustained. The, the retroactive amendment is not in order. A retroactive amendment is not in order. Now, I need to know before we continue how much time we have to actually try and debate the motion. About 14 minutes. About 14 minutes. Fine. Okay, let's try this then. We want us, uh, we haven't had, I don't think we've actually had any speeches in favor of or against whether we should adopt the underlying proposal. Am I wrong? No, okay. Who would like to speak in favor of naming the award the Lodestar? One of the members of the committee would probably be in preference of this here. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Okay. Remember, you have to state your name. Yep. David Peterson. Um, the, the committee, the Y committee, our primary job throughout this past year since Mid American has been in the naming issue. And we spent countless hours going over every single possible name and vetting every single possible name. Uh, what we have, our recommendation, Lodestar, is not necessarily the favorite choice of everybody on the committee, but it's the choice that we stand behind. It doesn't violate any other award names, which some popular choices do. Uh, for example, lot, we had a lot of suggestions for the Andre Norton Award, which is already an award, and we don't want to name our award after an already existing award. Um, basically, it is the Condorcet winner, if you, if you follow that uh, type of uh, you know, logic. It's, it's the best option that we have, and we feel very strongly for it. Thank you. Air speech against, and you know, uh, you, well, yeah, Dr. Lurie did stand up first. Given that the vast majority of the voters that they polled wanted Madeline LaEngle as the name. I propose an amendment by substitution to substitute It's actually Lodestar, an amendment to strike To strike out. Lodestar and, and put in Madeline LaEngle as the name of the award. Is there a second? Second. Uh, this, uh, this is debatable. Uh, why don't you take the, you, you get the first speech if you'll hold for a moment. It's five minutes of debate time which comes out of the underlying debate. Well, the, the, in favor of strike of the motion. Okay, so the, the committee went to the trouble of, of polling people online and 243 plus or minus one, if you want to add the Madeline Langle Galaxy, chose Madeline Langle as the name, and one person chose Lodestar. So I think that if they went to the trouble of polling people, and it's a reasonable name, that's what we should go with. A speech against from, yes, from... Hi, I should just note that we had um, a questionnaire at the beginning when we had, it was uh, a fill in the blank open questionnaire where you could suggest anything. And the point of that questionnaire was to get everybody's idea in case one person had the most brilliant idea ever. There were movements online to uh, name particular authors um, after the award, um, but we think that many of those movements weren't considering some of the underlying issues associated with naming an award after a person. And we, in fact, had a great deal of debate and argumentation on the committee about this issue. And whether we should name the award after a person got quite contentious. And there was a lot of contention about Madeline Langle. Because, of course, why many people of a certain age wanted her to be the nomination, because age had a lot to do with what names people were picking. Um, a lot of people wanted her, but they're familiar with a certain subset of her work. There were people on the committee who were very opposed to her because, for example, she uses her fiction to uh, promote an evangelical mission. There is also uh, opposition to her on the committee because she has been very criticized for her um, depictions of homosexuality. 
And I actually have some quotes about that, so uh, in case we need to uh, clarify that. So for example, Mari Ness, who um, wrote actually, in the- Believe it or not, I have to give you, uh, does the meeting give a consent to read papers? Yeah. No. Um, the motion, uh, the okay. request, that's a request, the majority being necessary to give you the chance to read the papers. All those in favor of allowing the papers to be read, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the affirmative has it, the member will proceed. Thanks. Okay, so on the tour rereads of La Angle's work, sorry if I'm too close, um, Mari Ness wrote in a review of The Severed Wasp. Uh, one of her books, that quote, bisexual and gay characters are distinctly unsympathetic, even villainous, and that she consistently portrays homosexual acts as harmful. Then, uh, Nancy St. Clair, a professor at Virginia Tech, wrote in the 1990s in an article about uh, this topic that um, La Angle, again, consistently, quote, negatively stereotypes homosexual characters and depicts homosexuality as a pathological state. Uh, and then she went on to say that in uh, Langley's early novel, Small Rain, quote, she, as a winner of the Newbery Award, is a major name in young adult fiction. Her work is emulated by less well-known authors and now appears in um, high school and elementary school libraries. And so this um, embodied representation disseminates negative portrayals of homosexuality. So these are all issues that we consider it as um, a committee, and I hope you guys consider them as well. This says yeah. used all of the time against the amendment. Speech in favor of the amendment. Mr. Yellow. Uh, By the way, the handheld mic has a different pickup than that one, so you need to talk more directly into it. Mike, <coughs> Ben Yellow still. If more directly. If we are trying to get some degree of public recognition for an award, I believe that having a name associated with it that people think of when they think of YA literature is more likely to gain credibility for the award than a random name like Lodestar or any other kind of generic naming. And therefore, if we are trying to gain credibility for the underlying award, I think that having it be a name that when people hear that name, they think, ah, YA, right, we know YA. And there, are no, there is no time left to speak against the motion. Uh, there's about... We move to extend debate time. Second. Motion to extend debate. By how much? Five minutes. Five minutes uh, on Two and a half each side. Uh, which is to reset the debate clock to five minutes. Six, okay, six, 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 six minutes total debate time. Okay. Uh, there's a second to extend debate to six minutes total. Thank you. All those in favor, a two-thirds vote being necessary to extend debate. All those in favor of extending the debate, raise your hand. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, there's less than two-thirds in the affirmative debate is not extended. Uh, what's, let's see, we've used up all the negative. There's uh, one, minute. one minute left in favor. For what? One minute thirty to speak in favor. Ms. Hayes. I wish to call the question. Is there? There's a motion. Is there a second to end the debate? Second. Okay. How many people still want to speak? And it would only be in favor of the amendment. Thank you. Hands down. Those in favor of ending the debate and bringing only the top level amendment to strike out Lodestar and insert Madeline Langle. All those in favor of ending the debate and bringing that to a vote, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The question is called. Now, on whether or not to strike out Lodestar and insert Madeline Langle, the majority necessary here. All those in favor of striking out Lodestar and inserting Madeline Langle, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down, the negative has it, the amendment fails. We are back to the words at D4 with Lodestar as the potential name. I need to find out what the time is left. <coughs> the timekeeper is working on this. Right. For what period, uh, Ms. Hayes? I wish to call the question. Have we had, have we had a debate on either side? I don't think yeah. we have. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. That's right. All right. That's right. Um, it is. I heard a lot of seconds um, before I put it to a vote. How many people still want to debate whether or not to name the award at all by a show of hands? Just or whether to name it something else. Or well, potentially to name it something else. Yes. A parliamentary inquiry. This one here. Come to the microphone, please, Dr. Lord. 
So should we vote to adopt Lodestar as the name? Could next year's business meeting propose a different name which could then be ratified next year? No. Please Sorry. don't answer the question. <laughs> Let the chair give his ruling on the parliamentary inquiry. The ruling is, the question is, if this is adopted as it stands now, and then goes forward to next year's business meeting for ratification, would changing the name at that stage require additional year of ratification? The chair rules that it would require an additional year of ratification. Is, are you trying to appeal the chair's ruling? Okay, in that case, if it's a parliamentary inquiry, wait, actually, is there somebody going to try and appeal that? I got to okay. Because I saw a bunch of hands go up, okay? All right, the member will come to microphone and state the parliamentary inquiry. Anne-Marie Rudolph, um, here, Mr. Chair, um, is there anything uh, currently in the rules that would prohibit next year's um, Worldcon from using a name that is adopted, perhaps? The inquiry, and it's actually, give the microphone back, it, the, the, the inquiry is, is really, really, really relevant because uh, the chairman in his personal capacity is the Worcester's division manager of next year's World Cup. <laughs> um, the chair rules that the World Cup next year would not be allowed to call this award Lodestar. It would have to call it by the name that is in the Constitution. Could, yes? Could I request that the chair recuse himself from that ruling and the plus the deputy presiding officer given, given what he just stated about his interest for next year? That's a, a it's a reasonable it's a reasonable request and therefore the chair the chair withdraws his ruling and asks Mr. Eastlake to take the chair and rule on it. Okay. The acting chair rules that uh, because of the way the requirement for one year ratification, the award is will not have actually been named, even assuming this passes uh, by that. However, next year's convention could use weasel wording, saying, likely to be named the World Star Award, or something like that. <laughs> but they can't actually say that the name is the World Star Award. Is some, uh, uh, yes, well, no, wait, no, you're still in the yeah. chair. Okay. I believe, and he right. can't stand up. Yes? Yeah, I just, Oh, he can stand up. Yeah. <laughs> in that case, you need to you know, get yeah. a microphone. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. Yeah. You're not the boss. <laughs> I, I, one thing is that my, my colleague, um, one thing that I had paid attention to was the award that is currently the World Science Fiction Award. The first several years was not officially named the Hugo Award. So what is that? Award? No, no, I'm actually, I'm act, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. Supporting, you know, is kind of. Well, the, I, don't, yeah. I don't need support. No. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get that out there. Are there are further comments or queries related to the ruling of the chair. I'm additional information to that this if they did do they would we would be awarding two young adults awards if that be, if that was true. Um, they could they, they could give a Hugo Award special a special category Hugo Award for young adult literature. We would also be giving the uh, not a Hugo award for young adult literature. That is correct. Chairman, the chair's ruling was Kevin Stanley. <laughs> Kevin Stanley, in his personal capacity as Kevin Stanley. The chair's ruling was appealed. There's been a, a, a debate for and against the ruling of the chair, starting with the chairman's own justification in it. I move to close debate on the appeal. Is so, there any objection to proceeding to a vote on the appeal of the chair's vote? Mr. Chairman, yeah. uh, would you objecting? please restate what it is that we're appealing? <laughs> <laughs> Good 
Chair, I, am I, I just, Mr. Chairman, I thought I understood the Chair ruled that the Worldcon next year could use its Special Hugo Award ability to create a category that had effectively the same definition as the YA Award. It, uh, it just, you know, and, and it could then also, it would then also have to give out its YA Award that we just created. Is that the correct interpretation? Yes. Thank you. We were voting on whether that, we would be voting on whether that ruling is correct. My name is Kate Secord. It was my understanding that the ruling which was appealed was that the next year's committee could call it a Lone Star Hugo Award as part of making that special award, which here, was here. a separate yes. issue from whether they could then create. We're like three deep now. But I believe the part that was appealed was that you could use a name that was not strictly the special Hugo, but you could call it the Lone Star Hugo. Here, here. That yeah. is correct. That is a ruling of the chair. And, that's and, and I appeal. believe that was the ruling that was appealed. Okay. Yes. okay. Is there anybody who wishes to debate the ruling of the chair on that? Okay. I'm sorry, I do. Okay. I, I rule that they, they could call it any legal name. I, you know, they couldn't I, I, perhaps call it, uh, you know, some... What, was there an effort to call the question on My that? name is yeah. Terry Neal. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think and that the so chair's ruling... Really stop. Is... Oh, God, I hope that's right. We, I, you I are believe, not... I believe the member's out of order. Because it was presently moved to call the question. Well, correct. Oh, okay. you were right. Did, and there was a second for that? Yes. 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 Okay. Anybody who wishes to still speak, please raise your hand. That's a part of our rules for part of that. Uh, not seeing no, no one. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're now voting on calling the question on the appeal of the chair's ruling. Uh, that the, the chair's ruling is that uh, next year's Worldcon committee, should they choose to exercise their authority to have a special view go, could no. call it the Lone Star. Yes. Not the special view go. Can't they call the Young Adult Award? No. 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 That was a separate ruling made earlier, which was not appealed. The separate ruling I made earlier, which was not appealed, was that they cannot actually call it the Lodestar Award, but they could use weasel wording to say likely to be called the Lodestar Award in the future, or something like that if they want. But the ruling being appealed is that they can use it, create a special Hugo, and they could call it the Lodestar Hugo if they want, or something like that. So we have had the a, a call, the question has been called on the uh, appeal of the ruling of the chair. They try to say, Majority to change something. Users that are off debate, sorry. Uh, all those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. The ayes have it, and uh, the question is called. Uh, the we will now vote on the appeal of the ruling of the chair. Uh, all those wishing to sustain the ruling of the chair that next year's World Bank Committee could create, should they choose, a special Hugo category and call it the Lodestar Award. Uh, those who are uh, support the ruling of the chair, please raise your hand. <coughs> Thank you. Those of the contrary opinion. Thank you. The ayes have it, and the ruling of the chair is sustained. Is there any more business arising from this series of stuff? I don't think so. So perhaps since the uh, <laughs> chair should be returned to the rightful chair. There's about seven and a half minutes debate time available on the underlying proposal, and we need to recess for one minute. All right, the meeting will return to order. There was, before those various motions, there was actually a motion coming at us to, to call the question on whether to name the award or not, to end the debate on B.4. Is, and the only reason that it didn't come up was because there was an appeal, or yeah, a ruling and an appeal that, that took precedence over it. The question before us is in over ending the debate over D.4 and bringing the question to a vote. Who still wants to debate D.4? Hands down. All those in favor of ending the debate and bringing D.4 to a vote, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, hands, hands down. There being two thirds in the majority, the question is called. The question is on adopting uh, the Lodestar Award as uh, the name for the YA uh, Award 
subject to ratification next year. All those in favor of adopting this name, raise your hands. Hands down. Lodestar. All those in favor of adopting the Lodestar. Let's do it again. Okay, let me try this. I'm about to ask whether we want to vote on naming this award the Lodestar Award subject to ratification next year. That's the question that's about to be voted on. Is there anybody here who does not understand what's being voted on? Thank you. <laughs> on whether to adopt this proposal to name the award Lodestar subject to ratification next year. Raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The affirmative has it. Motion B.4, naming this award, the Lodestar Award, subject to ratification, is adopted and sent, is sent on to next year. We have reached 1245. It is time to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned until 10... Oh, wait a minute. Tomorrow's Saturday, right? I need to make this clear to people on the scheduling before we adjourn. When we convene at 10 o'clock, we actually have a four-hour total block of time, not three like today. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we convene for site selection business only initially. We receive the 2019 site selection results, and we have, if we want to use it up, we don't have to, question time for the 2018 Worldcon, and question time for the 2020 bidders, and not before 10.30, we will then go into recess, and not before 10.30, we will have the former Worldcon chair's photo right here in front of us. And then not before 11 o'clock, we will reconvene for actual business. The effect of this is, if you are not interested in site selection, if you are not interested in the Worldcon chair's photo, you don't have to be here until 11. For what purpose does the member rise? Which is? Uh, the member, okay. Go ahead and state. Uh, as a logistical issue, it is our intent, I believe at this time, to distribute the reports that were requested from the Hugo administrator. Oh, I forgot about that. At 10 o'clock, yes. at the beginning of the meeting. I don't care if you don't want to stay for any of the things happening between 10 o'clock and the end of the, of the chair's photo. But I would recommend that everyone at least come and get a copy of those reports so that you can read them while we're doing the things that you don't care about. Right. The chair stands correct. <laughs> Frank, frankly, the chair had forgotten about that. That's true. It is absolutely right. Logistically, it would be a good idea to show up at 10, even if you don't want to hang around for that. You can go have a drink if you want to. <laughs> okay, let me restate this before we adjourn. We are not adjourned yet. I want to, because there are questions, I still hear them. The Hugo administrators have reports to, di to distribute at the beginning of tomorrow's meeting at 10 o'clock. They will take you time to read. To give yourself time to read them, you probably should show up at 10 or maybe even earlier if they're available. But we will not be considering any substantive business until 11 o'clock. Any more questions? I don't see any. This meeting is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning.